Hello, everybody. My name is Hugo Immediato. I am from Rocketman, and this is our presentation on updating macOS Monterey utilizing the MDM software update command with deferral via JAMP. So quick overview, I'll be doing a mass action brief. I'll be discussing the requirements and I'll explain the parentheses later. Uh, we'll be assessing environments and uh, meeting said requirements and then the deployment. Uh, so the deployment of this, it takes 30 seconds, but meeting those requirements can take up to 30 days, you know, predicated upon implementation strategies. So I just wanted to note that. Um, so yeah, mass action remote command. Why are we doing that? Well, for us as administrators, it's quick and easy. And for the end users, it's interactive and empowering. So on the left here, I have a screenshot depicting the end users experience. They're gonna get a required manage update notification uh, with an options drop down menu. Uh, this will provide three options install, try tonight, or remind me tomorrow. The remind me tomorrow option is predicated upon uh, your deferral count that you set. And once this is exceeded, uh, the deferral count, that remind me option will disappear. They'll only be able to install or try tonight, uh, and then it'll force the update. Uh, one little nuance I've seen with this is once the end user clicks install in the background it starts downloading and preparing that installation and then the computer restarts without a notification to the end user uh, so when you guys go to use this feature just a disclaimer to include in your communications that hey uh, don't interact with your computer after you click install or you could lose unsaved work so requirements and why are they in parentheses um, I put them in parentheses because everybody has a different environment. Uh, the workflow and scenarios you're going to encounter are going to be different. Uh, but the requirements are minimum OS of Mac OS 1201 in order to use the MDM update with deferral. And for Apple Silicon, uh, Macs, you need a bootstrap token escrow. So this uh, escrow feature was included or introduced in 1015.4 and polished in 1101. So if you're on 1015.4 or 11.01 and up already, you're in a pretty good spot. The polishing in Big Sur occurred because on 1015.4, if you created a local standard account outside of the setup assistant, it won't get that secure token. But in 11.01, that was fixed. Um, so a big factor here is you need to account for operating system versions in your environment. I recommend and I implement the updates in Monterey only if the operating systems are on 10.15.7, I think as late as version of like Catalina end up. If you're updating from Mojave or earlier to Monterey, you're gonna encounter issues for a multitude of reasons. I'm not gonna go into them, uh, just, know that I've had issues updating from 10.14 or before and up. I've had no issues when rolling out these updates from Catalina and up. Uh, second, we need to uh, get the status of who has a secure token and who has a bootstrap token as growth. For this, I use three extension attributes. I use one for the bootstrap token, one for the token holder, and one for an unknown token holder. Um, it's important to push these out well ahead of time uh, so that your Jamf environment has, a, has time to update the computer's inventories uh, with these statuses. Uh, we'll make these available on our GitHub uh, probably next week. We'll send out an email. So now that we've assessed the environment and we know where our operating system versions are, and let's pretend everybody's on Catalina. You can use this workflow to get to Catalina, but let's pretend everyone's on Catalina. Um, I've created a workflow here uh, that takes into consideration uh, the computer's uh, Intel or M1, if your end users are standard or administrator accounts. And if you have a managed administrator account with or without a rotating password. Okay. so. Um, 
this workflow. I use Mr. Macintosh as a quick and easy way to get the installer package. If that's not okay by your security team, download it and package it yourself. And then I detail uh, the minimum amount of smart computer groups you need to make, the minimum amount of policies you need to create, how to create them, and provided are the scripts uh, used to get all this information from your end users or input information uh, from your Jamf environment for your administrator accounts. Uh, we'll be emailing this out with the extension attributes. Once we make this public, we're just sanitizing it right now to make sure that it is ready for the public. And the second part of meeting our requirements is, is escrowing that bootstrap token. So on the right here is a visualization of three scenarios uh, that you'll most likely encounter. Uh, this is from Frederick Avalus, a jamper, and he released this about a year ago, but it still holds true today. So to get the bootstrap token during a calculation at Setup Assistant with a device in your pre-stage enrollment, it will give you that secure token and escrow that bootstrap token right away. If you're using a third-party app or you're binding to AD and you have a mobile user, when that's account, when that account is created, it'll be given the secure token. And then when that end user logs in, it will escrow that secure token. And remember, this is on 10, 4, uh, 10 15, 4 or 1101 up. If you're tokenless, enabling file vault will provide that computer secure token and then that computer will have to log in. I've tested this uh, with user initiated enrollment and it does work. Um, so, it seems like a lot, and this is a whole confusing process uh, that I think is why everyone is here today. Uh, but this this uh, flowchart really visualizes it in an easy to understand way. So I hope that helps. Um, so now that we've met the requirements, this is how easy the deployment is. You're gonna create a smart computer group or an advanced search. You're gonna build out the criteria to spec the computers you want to update. Um, and it's as simple as clicking view, verifying that those computers are the ones you want to update. You click next, click send remote commands, click next again. Uh, you want to update the operating system version, select the version you want, and uh, use utilize the installator feature with deferrals. And that's it. Uh, the remote command will be pending in the computer's managed inventory record. Uh, it, once it hits that computer, they'll get that notification we detailed in like slide two. So with that being said, uh, these are three links that were super useful, right? Champ has a great article about this. Apple provides insight into this. And just a shout out to Frederick Avalus uh, for providing that flowchart.